this is our south house. Uh, here we have a lot of cactus and succulents. It's the southernmost house that gets most the most light here at, at the greenhouses. Um, it stays very dry in here um, and houses many, many cactus. An example of uh, one of the easier to care for low light uh, plants to take care of is this pencil cactus. It's actually a euphorbia. It's in the uh, euphorb family, which is interesting. If you uh, break it off, there's always uh, white latex in euphorb. That's a characteristic of that plant family. Um, so this plant is completely dry. And uh, this time of year in the winter, it can just stay dry for a week or two and still look decent. Um, so overwatering would really be something to harm this plant this time of year. Um, but it would be something easy to care for in the house. Another example of a low light succulent plant uh, is Haworthia. Um, these, this is a huge plant growing in this tiny pot. It doesn't need very much water at all. Um, all these succulent plants, you basically want to leave them dry uh, in the winter for like two weeks. Um, depending on how much light they're getting. Uh, but really, they handle drought very, very well. Uh, so Clint, I had a question here. Yeah. I see what I what I think is an aloe vera, and that's one of the most common house plants I think that people kind of have on their kitchen windowsill. Mm -hmm. um, and is that another one that's more of a succulent and doesn't need a, a, a it's probably better to underwater it than overwater it. Oh, abso absolutely it is. Um, uh, they're also very easy to propagate. Um, and they're very sought after. You know, they have uh, some healing properties. If you get a burn, you rub some aloe vera on it, sunburns. Um, but yeah, they're, they're, they handle low light very well. And uh, you, you do want to let them dry out between watering. So kind of mentioning some of these tropical or succulent plants, um, that's one of these characteristics that might be more desirable for indoor plants in, in the winter in a lot of homes because there is that sort of uh, light factor. Things that require a little bit less light, so they're more shade tolerant, mm -hmm. would be probably things that are easier to take care of in the home. And now with that, one other question I had is, what's a good way for somebody to test if, if, if a plant needs water? I use all my senses. Uh, touch is probably the main, the main one. You touch and see if those media is dry. Sometimes though, especially this time of year, and if you're using peat or, or if it's in sand, it will look dry on the surface and then below there's moisture. So sometimes I will use weight. Um, I'll pick pick up the pot, see if I can feel feel it being heavy or not. Um, and another, another thing is to look at the plant itself. Um, even if there's some wilt in the winter, uh, if it's later in the afternoon, you can, uh, you could let it go all night and water it the next day and uh, be fine. So it's hard to tell a wilt with a succulent, but um, yeah, definitely touch and weight would be a good way to tell. Okay, thank you. That's, that's, and I think that that's probably one of the things that people have, have uh, questions about the most is, is watering. So when should I water? How much should I water? And each plant, each tropical plant is going to be a little different, but, mm -hmm. but during the winter, it's probably better to keep them underwater than overwater. Right. Well, uh, I like to think of succulents as like the, uh, the lazy man's plant. Uh, you can really let them go. It's a good one. Uh, if you find yourself not having time to care for your plants a lot, uh, in the winter, you don't want to water, uh, at the end of the day. It's just moisture sitting on, on the plant and it being soaked all night uh, is not good uh, for disease pressure. Um, so only water in the morning and uh, for succulents water several days after you think it needs water. <laughs> that's a great tip. Yeah. That's one of the big kind of factors that we got to keep an eye on is, is watering. And I, and I suppose maybe now is a good time to mention fertilizers as well. Um, then that's, okay. part, that's probably the other thing that people are curious about, not what kinds of fertilizers, but uh, when, when do we want to be giving a, a tropical plant fertilizer in the winter or should we wait till spring right. to start? Yeah, absolutely. I think that, um, well, you don't want to add a bunch of fertilizer in the winter. Um, a lot of insects and pests are attracted to uh, a lot of fleshy new growth. Um, or nitrogen rich uh, plants. Um, 
And if you add nitrogen, they're just going to uh, try to try to grow and there's not that much sunlight to uh, use up the nitrogen. Um, so you really want plants to go through kind of a pseudo dormancy in the, in the winter, especially tropical plants. Adding no fertilizer for the winter would, I think, be okay. If you are gonna add fertilizer, just do a blossom booster, which is uh, mostly uh, phosphorus, like high in phosphorus fertilizers. If you, if you must fertilize, I would use those um, instead. Great, that's great information. And, and um, the, the kind of times to fertilize that's important. We don't wanna be fertilizing in winter. Mm -hmm. And you kind of talked about the different kinds of fertilizers to use. Yeah. And, and, and the, the important point here is to not put a, a tropical, trying to prevent a tropical plant, an indoor plant from being stressed. And so uh, fertilizing, overwatering in winter can put them into a, in a, into a state of stress, which is going to make them more susceptible to diseases, mm -hmm. pests, and, and these kind of things. So, so uh, we're trying to keep a, a plant kind of uh, uh, coasting and keep it, keep it happy. Yes, yeah. Just keep it at one level, maintain it. Uh, we'll save the growing for next spring and summer. That sounds good. Very, very, very good tips.